Once a young boy who enjoyed tinkering with computers, Bill Gates now is one of the richest people in the world. These days, Gates is more interested in giving his money away than he is in acquiring more. In 2010, along with his soon-to-be ex-wife Melinda and fellow multi-billionaire Warren Buffett, Bill Gates co-founded the Giving Pledge. It encourages the world's wealthiest people to give away most of their fortunes to charity. He has donated $35.8 billion in stock from Microsoft, the company he co-founded, to his own Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the largest private charitable foundation in the world. Welcome to The Luxus, where luxury inspires minds. And today, we'll be talking about how Bill Gates made his billions. Budding entrepreneurs and philanthropists want to know how Gates amassed his fortune so that they might join the billionaires club one day. While Gates' family background wouldn't be considered ultra-wealthy, his parents certainly did very well for themselves. Bill Gates Sr. was a successful lawyer in the Seattle area and was a partner at a law firm. They had enough money to send their son to Lakeside Private School in the Seattle area and later paid for Bill Gates' first two years at Harvard Law School. When he was in seventh grade, Gates was first introduced to computers at Lakeside Private School. Lakeside had acquired a computer terminal to which students were given free access and Gates was immediately fascinated. It was here that Gates met his future business partner, Paul Allen. The two of them took full advantage of the computer terminal at Lakeside, spending their free time learning to program. In exchange for more computer time, Gates and Allen created a computerized scheduling system for their school. Using their passion for computer programming, the duo started making some money for their efforts by creating a computerized traffic analysis system called Trafo Data. And guess what? The system netted them $20,000 after selling it to the Washington State Highway Department. Their big chance came when Gates was at Howard Law School and Allen at Washington State University. After reading an issue of Popular Electronics, Gates knew that personal computing was set to take off. And he wanted to write the software that powered these personal computers. Gates reportedly called MITS or MITS, the maker of the Altair 8800, from his dorm room and offered to create software for it. MITS readily accepted and both Gates and Allen set to work. By 1975, the pair sold the software as the programming language BASIC to MITS for 3,000 plus royalties. Desiring to be closer to the headquarters of MITS, Allen eventually moved to Albuquerque and Gates dropped out of Howard to found their company Microsoft on April 4, 1975. Microsoft retained the rights to the BASIC programming language and was able to sell it to personal computer hardware makers. The company grew rapidly and by 1978, the annual revenue topped $1 million. In 1979, the team moved their headquarters to Bellevue, Washington to gain access to a larger pool of talented programmers. By 1980, Gates struck a deal with IBM to develop the software for their personal computers. The company created the operating system for IBM's PC but retained the licensing rights to the software. This proved to be a very big move. When the IBM PC launched in 1981, Microsoft's annual revenue skyrocketed to $16 million. And by the time numerous IBM PC imitators came out, Microsoft had licensed its software to 50 hardware manufacturers. In 1985, Microsoft revenues were north of $140 million and they moved to their current world headquarters of Redmond, Washington. In 1986, Microsoft went public and ended its first day at $28 per share. Bill Gates owned 11.1 million shares and was worth $310 million. Microsoft continued to grow and in 1995, Bill Gates became the richest man in the world with a net worth of $12.9 billion. 
though he gained billions of dollars through Microsoft since leaving his CEO position in 2000, Gates has continued to grow his wealth through investing. In fact, his net worth has nearly doubled over the past 20 years, from $60 billion in 2000 to more than $125 billion in 2021. Interestingly, Gates' investments have been managed by Michael Larson at Cascade Investment LLC since 1994. Larson has helped him earn a compound 11% annual return since 1995. Bill Gates once said, to win big, you sometimes need to take big risks. His current portfolio certainly reflects that style, as he is still an aggressive investor and had, even as of 2019, 60% of his wealth invested in stocks. What's more, Gates is also known for his charitable work, giving nearly $50 billion away over the past 25 years, typically to organizations that support healthcare, poverty, and public education. Since 1994, Bill and Melinda Gates have given away more than $45 billion to charitable causes, primarily through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The Giving Pledge was founded in 2010 and 40 of the world's wealthiest people committed to giving away a majority of their wealth during their lifetime. Today, more than 200 of the world's wealthiest individuals and families have joined the pledge. The financial world was stunned when after 27 years of marriage, Bill and Melinda Gates announced their divorce in 2021. From mansions to pieces of land, business investments and the largest philanthropic organization on the planet, untangling the financials between them will be an interesting development to keep our eyes on. What motivated Gates was a continual thirst for knowledge, and that extends to finances. No matter what your portfolio looks like, you can learn a few valuable lessons from Bill Gates' money management. As a teenager, Gates saw an opportunity to revolutionize the world and personal computers would be the linchpin. Dropping out from Harvard was a major risk, but his fervent beliefs paid off in a big way. He started a revolutionary company and became the youngest billionaire ever by 1987. No matter how you invest your money, Gates shows that giving is always an important part of your financial life. In addition to helping further a cause you believe in, giving also allows you to pay less in taxes. A smart investor always makes room for charitable giving in their portfolio. Giving away appreciated securities is an excellent way to accomplish this and avoid paying taxes. With over 60% of his holdings in the stock market, Gates knows the value of investing for long-term growth. Now whether you build your own stock portfolio or simply invest in broad-based index funds, investing in stocks can compound your money over time. However, while it occasionally pays to take big risks for what you believe in, you still need a plan for your money. And on that word of advice, it's time for us to call it a day. But we do hope that you liked the video and found it informative. And if you did, then you know the drill. Subscribe to The Loxious and don't forget to click the bell icon. Your valuable suggestions are very important to us, so do post them in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next video.